Hey, what's up everybody? Dorn Aldana coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we have a special guest interview with the one and only Erica Dose from Southern California. And uh, we're going to be talking about how she went from a four-year rut of stagnation, doing about 500K plus per year in revenue, but a rut nonetheless. And we took her from that rut to doubling her production in just three months. And another caveat was a significant lift in purchase business in the face of what we would call a refi boom. And we did all that without a single cold call. So we're just gonna talk about her journey, her story, and I have a feeling it's gonna be an inspiration to many of you. So uh, Erica, thanks for sharing your story today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes, my pleasure. Well, why don't we dive in and just share a little bit about your story in terms of how you got started, how long you've been in the business, and what inspired you to get into this crazy business to begin with? So I've been in the business now um, 18 years. So I graduated college uh, with a marketing degree, you know, didn't know quite what I wanted to do. And I, my mom actually circled an ad in the newspaper back when you used to read newspapers. And it said, do you want to make money? So she's like, Erica, I think you should look into this. So I did. And I started working with a small broker shop um, in Madison, Wisconsin. And that's how I got my start. I was there for a short amount of time because they very quickly started having competitions on how much they could charge the borrower. Um, and I wasn't comfortable with that. So I left that pretty quickly. But I have stayed inside um, the mortgage business really ever since. Wow. Thank you, Mama. Right. Yes. <laughs> Mama knows best. So that's so cool. She's attuned to her daughter. She's attuned to your your loves and your aptitudes and your passions and your unique, unique gifts and talents. And obviously uh, the rest is history. 18 years later. That's amazing. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously it's been quite a journey. You've been through the ups and the downs, the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, we obviously have seen much in the way of turbulence over the last 18 years, uh, in, you know, after 9-11 and the melt, meltdown 2008, 2009 uh, and so forth. And then, uh, of course, lots of upsides as well. Uh, this being a significant boom among uh, other booms you've experienced over the last 18 years. But there's been some challenges for you as well. Let's talk about that. I mean, before you reached out to us. You were uh, doing well, doing better than most. Most people would look at where you're at and say, man, that's phenomenal. I'd love to be there. But as I always like to say, good is always the mortal enemy of great. Because when you do good, you tend to kind of get comfortable and complacent and stagnate. And so you're in a bit of that place uh, prior to us meeting. Tell us a little bit about that journey in terms of some of the... Uh, trials, tribulations, struggles, pain points, frustrations, stresses you're experiencing before you reached out to us? So, yeah, so the last five years, I have been pretty consistent in my production and, you know, which is, which is fine, but I was starting just to get kind of bored and kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And um, so, at, you know, in my career, I've worked with different companies, but I was finding that I was working for companies that were kind of holding me small and not allowing me to grow and, you know, get bigger. So um, I started with a new company last fall and that really changed the dynamic of how I could evolve as a loan officer. Mm -hmm. And then when March hit and COVID hit and nobody knew what was going to happen, um, I did not want to let that slow me down. So back in March, nobody knew. We didn't know we were going to have a housing boom. We didn't know that rates were going to plummet and that houses were going to fly off the market. So I really took that time to really focus on what I could do to increase my business or at least keep my business. And that has really catapulted since. And at that time was the same time I started joining your program. Yeah. And that so it was interesting because hindsight's 2020, right? You didn't realize how crazy low the rates were going to be and the significant rising tide that raises a lot of boats in this space where even someone who has uh, two brains to, uh, brain cells to rub together and an ounce of ambition is just crushing it right now. If they've been in the business for any period of time, that's been a significant uplift in business. So, you know, we'll take it. We'll take the refi boom. We'll take that additional cash. But uh, one of the challenges you were facing prior to us 
connecting was you had a uh, lion share of your production hinging on a very small number of clients, namely one big builder that was like 50% of your business. And also 50% of your business was coming from refis as well. You wanted to have a bigger portion of that coming from the purchase business. And like we talked about before, you're doing pretty well, but nonetheless, you're getting bored, stagnating at the same place. So you wanted to mix things up. You wanted to shift things up. You wanted to step things up. So you reached out for help. What would you say out of all the things that you were struggling with in that uh, season leading up to reaching out for help? What would you say were some of the, maybe the top one, two or three most pressing pain points for you as a veteran who'd been in the business for a multitude of years and had been at a pro top producer, very you know significant income level, doing about half a million a year for four years straight. What were some of the unique challenges you were facing beyond just boredom? Um, I think I was just hitting a wall with the grind. You know, the grind, Southern California is a super competitive market. And it was just the grind of, it wasn't matter how you serve them. It was all that mattered was the rate and the closing mm -hmm. costs and how much they could suck out of you. So yeah. what I was really looking for was to have more control over my business and to how to make this career more enjoyable and more fun. Like it is what has kept me in this business for so long. Yeah, it's amazing once you start to get bored and you start to get lulled into this sense of stagnation. It's amazing how that just grates on you, right? It's like the antithesis of joy is boredom. And then it's that grind that grates on you. Or it's like same old, same old. It starts to feel like Groundhog's Day, does it not? Yes. Yeah, it's like just same old, same old. And it just gets so redundant and repetitive. And so if you're a veteran right now and you've been in that place, chances are you can relate to Erica's story intimately. If you're a newbie, then you can embrace the fact that you're all bright eyed and bushy tailed and you're, you're excited about your career as a significant advantage because it is as soon as you lose that passion. It's like having a Ferrari with no fuel. You know, you might have a career that looks pretty on the outside, but at the end of the at the end of the day, if you don't have that fuel in the tank that gets you, you know, bouncing out of bed with pep in your step and sparkling your sparkling your eye, why are you doing what you're doing? Is it really worth it? Life's too short to just kind of drag your butt through the day, if you ask me. So you came to us in that place, and the repetitive, mundane nature of life was very real for you when we talked. And you're ready to step things up, but you've already tried several things prior to, you know, reaching out to us. So let's talk about that for a moment, because chances are there's people listening, watching who've tried many things, too. They've tried the, you know, reaching out to realtors every Monday, cold calling. They've tried the getting a bunch of leads that didn't convert uh, They've tried Zillow leads or whatever it might have been. So tell us a little bit about your journey and trying to crack the code out of this rut of stagnation. What sort of things did you try and how did they work for you? Uh, well, I've been trying, I've been working on building the resale part of you know, my business for a while now. And I was doing the um, you know, weekly broker preview meetings in our area where there's you know, room full, five, six, seven realtors going to open houses. I tried a lot of that. Um, but I guess what turned the corner for me is that wasn't working and it was taking a ton of time. So it was really just making connections with agents that were already, I was already involved with, already involved in transaction with, and really just focusing on reaching out to those agents and building those relationships and doing that consistently. So the broker opens, the open houses, the showing up, you know, back in the day, it would have been showing up to open houses with uh, rate sheets and donuts, you know, the old school methods of face to face, belly to belly, meet and greet, that kind of thing. And uh, somewhere along the way, over the last five, 10, 15 years, that hit the point of diminishing returns. And you right. were obviously confronted with that fact, being that that was a, a mainstay for you for a period of time, then it started to kind of fizzle out. What about other methods? Had you tried the cold calling? Had you invested in the other kind of, you know, quote unquote, programs or marketing programs or coaching programs in the past? You don't have to name names, but what are some other things that you had tried in investing in various different solutions that didn't pan out like you had hoped? Anything else? 
Um, I've done some lead programs with other agents, you know, we're getting 30 plus leads, you know, a week that, you know, really turned into nothing and where I was spending a ton of money on um, for the agents. So that wasn't benefiting me either. You know, other than that, I, I have tried the cold calling. I do not like that. I've sent the mass emails uh, that did not work out very well for me at all. Um, so now I'm just working more with technology and working more with the relationships I have already connected with previous and current customers. Yeah, so hopefully this is a bit of consolation for those listening and watching who've tried the cold calling. Uh, they tried the, you know, spamming the spraying and praying by email or whatever and getting nothing but just people saying, remove me from your list. Uh, they perhaps tried the open houses or those sorts of methods to no avail. And to know that other people have tried what you've tried and they're getting similar to no results as you are. That can be some consolation just to know that you're not the only one. You're not the only one who's banging your head against the wall to no avail, trying the old school caveman methods from the dark ages like cold calling. And uh, it helps to know that because sometimes we feel like our broker owner or the company owner or our sales manager is telling us to go out and do this stuff and work for them. And then we kind of feel weird. We feel like a failure. We feel like we're you know letting them down when it's not working like they said it should work. Well, the stuff that worked for them 10, 15, 20 years ago just doesn't work anymore. And often they lose sight of that because they forget it's a new landscape, it's a new economy, it's a new world. So welcome to the club, y'all. If you're feeling the pain of doing it the hard way like Erica did, you're not alone. And uh, she can certainly relate to your plight. So let's talk about your secret motivation. I always, you know, kind of frame it as the secret motivation. This is, you know, if we were to crawl into the the deep secret chasms of your soul prior to you reaching out to us for help after you trying all these other methods that didn't work. And here you are, you've been in this rut of stagnation, albeit a healthy income level, and you're ready to step things up. And you know that there's some things at stake here if you don't. What was your secret motivation that had you move past any reservations, hesitations, fears, and say, screw it, let's do it and take the plunge with us? What was kind of that inner soul motivation that for you was like the real heart of what was at stake for you in you stepping up your game and what's it and what was at stake for you if you didn't? Tell us about that. So I guess. The motivation is I really do not enjoy complacency. Mm. So I'm always looking to improve. I'm always wanting to be better. I have a highly competitive, you know, nature. I'm a, a competitive person. And I I always want to just take it to that next level. Um, and I've enjoyed the lifestyle I've created for myself and my kids. Um, and I want to be someone that my kids can look up to and be proud of. Mm. So it wasn't just about getting higher up on the top producer list or more recognition and, and reward, although that is certainly a big part of being competitive is climbing the ladder in terms of being a shining star in the industry and a shining star on the stages of recognition and rewards in our respective companies. But for you as the heart of being a mom worthy of emulation where your kids see mama as a independent, successful, powerful woman that shows them that it's not just about having dreams. It's about showing them the pathway to make them real and not just by virtue of you talking about it, but you living it, you walking it and being an embodiment of it, a living embodiment of the kind of leadership and the kind of life that you want your kids to live. Is that the idea? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And notice that that is like, a whole lot deeper and a whole, whole lot more motivating than just adding some more zeros and commas to your bank account, right? It's like, once you get to a certain level of comfort in your income, it's not about the money anymore. It's about legacy. It's about significance. It's about impact. It's about influence. It's about being someone that really leaves a legacy of awesome for your kids, for your kids' kids, and, and creating an epic life where you can look at yourself in the mirror and feel like 
you're proud of who you're becoming. And uh, it's important every time I do these interviews, I always love hearing the secret motivation because it always really gets to the heart of someone's character and, and someone's soul and what really matters most to them, their, their highest uh, values in life. So I love that. Talk to us about the fears you faced before pulling the trigger. Cause we got on the phone, we got real, we had an honest conversation. Um, I often say that we can't change our reality until we face our reality. And we, we definitely had that kind of an honest uh, bearing of our hearts conversation. I say our uh, is probably the royal hour because it was really about you sharing your heart and your journey and what's important to you and what you want to accomplish. But it was a very honest, real, authentic, transparent conversation. And um, there was a point at which you got to that defiant resolve where you said, screw it, let's do it. And you committed to your breakthrough with our program, not knowing everything about us, not knowing everything about our history and our accolades and all the success stories and testimonials, you knew that we're the real deal from a standpoint of, you know, it's not our first rodeo. You knew we've been in the game for, a, you know, a decade and a half, but, you know, you didn't necessarily spend weeks on end researching us. So there's a certain degree of faith that you needed to exercise in order to take that plunge. And so let's just open that up for a moment, just for people listening and watching. What sort of fears did, real fears did you face uh, when deciding to pull the trigger with us, what, what sort of, um, say looming unknowns did you feel and move past in order to take that bold step for yourself? So I guess the number one fear is what if I fail, mm. you know, what if I invest in this? What if I invest not only my money, but my time in this and I, I fail. What if I don't, you know, come out of the, on the other side better than I went in. So that was, you know, a big fear for me. Or what if I joined this program and I was not as good as I thought it was? Yeah. You know, so that was, you know, a, a big fear. So that was probably, that was a lot of it. Like, what if I go into this program and you tell me something I don't want to hear? You know, yeah. or something I didn't want to realize or something I refuse to do, which there isn't a lot. I'm pretty coachable, but, <laughs> but that was, you know, the fear of failure was probably the biggest, the biggest piece. Yeah. And again, a very human fear and a very real fear at that. How did you move beyond that? Because obviously, you know, we don't work with the interested. The interested always find an excuse. There's always some blockade. There's always some hurdle. There's so, always some caveat or concern that will stop them. We work with the defiantly committed because they always find a way. And you proved yourself to be defiantly committed. You were more committed to your dream than you were your comfort zone. So you said, screw it, let's do it. But in the moment of decision for you, you know, those fears are still very real. How did you move past those fears and just decide to take the plunge in the face of them. What was there for you that pulled you past them? Uh, well, I have done a lot of coaching over the years, all diff most like a lot of couple of different life coaches. I've always had success with them, but none of them have been in my market, in my career choice. So that was motivating for me. And I'm not, I just knew like in my gut, I knew it was the right move for me. I don't, I do not take a lot of time to make a decision when I'm given a choice. I really look inside to what my gut is telling me. And if my gut is telling me just do it, I go with that initial decision. So let's speak to that for a moment because the gut is often referred to in decision making. It's that inner voice. Some people call it their intuition. Some people call it their subconscious mind. Some people call it their, their God leading or their, their God um, direction. There's this inner sense in the gut of leading, of guidance, of direction. And yet so often we let our fears shroud that leading in that direction. And let's be real. It takes real courage. Even when we do hear our gut, it takes courage to listen to it because the fear also can feel so real and it can feel so weighty that it shrouds the light and the leading of our gut. And so 
even though you might fear, feel the fear of failure, you might feel the fear of, oh crap, what if this doesn't work? You still have had this muscle building over the years of hearing that voice and feeling that gut dire direction or leading and having your gut lead you in the face of, holy crap, what if this doesn't work? Would you say that's a fair assessment? I would say that's a fair assessment. Yeah, so there's something about your identity uh, building up this sense of identity as a winner, as a champion, as a, an achiever that I think is a big part of you building that champion level decisiveness muscle. Because one of the things I've noticed about people who achieve in life is number one, they are decisive and they've developed a habit of being decisive, but they don't do it from their head. They do it from their heart or as you say, mm -hmm. from their gut. And I think that's really important because your gut is attuned to your highest values. Your gut is attuned to this inner knowing. Your gut is attuned to a vibrational frequency of sensory acuity on the outside, sensing whether or not it's safe, whether or not it's true, whether or not it's authentic. So obviously there was a, you know, your spidey senses, your internal radar was on testing to see, are we legit? Do we really care? Are we someone worthy? Are we a team? Are we uh, the leader or coach or guide that is worthy of not just your investment, but your life force, your energy, your trust and your faith in us? And so there's a part of you in your subconscious that was really tuned in such that your gut was sensing how do i feel about this does this feel right do they care are they really on mission with purpose on purpose to serve me or are they just here for a paycheck i don't want to lead you on that because obviously you have your own story to tell but my sense is your gut was also not just testing the value proposition but was testing even the audio, the timber, the vibration in my voice as we were having that conversation. Would you say that was true? Yes, I, I know I always felt that you know what you had to offer was truly coming from from your heart and I felt a connection that I could trust pretty early on in the conversation. Um, and I just feel like we had the same you know belief if you don't grow, you're going backwards and you keep going backwards, you're going to be in the ground. So. Yeah. And without risk, there is no reward. Right. So you knew that intuitively. You said, screw it, let's do it. You pulled out your credit card and took the plunge and the rest <laughs> is history. Here we are now about four months and change later. And uh, obviously there's been an avalanche of awesome such that we're doing this uh, special guest appearance with you. Let's talk about that for a moment. But before we get into the avalanche of awesome, maybe let's just take a step back, back and talk about some of the reservations or fears you may have had after pulling the trigger and you start to dive into the modules and showing up and show up to the Q&A calls. What were some of the sort of things that were perhaps still in your head? Maybe that part of you that wants to keep you safe that is driven on self-preservation, you know, the fight or flight mechanism that's always kind of on our shoulder, having a voice of concern about what if, what if this doesn't work? What if you do this and it doesn't pan out? What if you do this and they tell you something that you're not willing to embrace? Like you said, tell us about the quote unquote skeptical try of the things that perhaps we got you to do right from the beginning that you felt a little skeptical doing and you were like, really? You're really going to get us to do this? You're really getting me to do this? Seriously? Let's talk about that for a moment. Um, like the cold shower? I was very <laughs> the cold shower. I wasn't going to lead you directly to it, but that, yeah, that seems like a suitable <laughs> thing to present on the skeptical try. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so tell us about that. I don't want to scare everyone off thinking this program is just about cold showers because it's obviously <laughs> not. But yeah, why don't we talk about the cold shower for a moment? Obviously, it's a crazy thing to do. Who in the right mind takes a cold freaking shower, right? So tell us about how that went for you. So, well, I personally <laughs> do not enjoy a cold shower. 
<laughs> you along with probably 99.9% of humanity. So yeah, welcome yes. to the club. But I did try it. And I have to say it was quite rewarding to know that I got through it because I'm not a quitter. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just going to do this to prove that I, mind over matter, right? Because right. my heart was telling me to jump out and my head was like, no, nope, you can do this. You've been through worse. So, <laughs> right. And then after your hu husband is like looking at you with looks of uh, being completely, you know, kerfuzzle, kerfuzzled or uh, discombobulated why his wife is taking a cold shower. Um, obviously, there was a, a story to tell just in that alone. You explaining why you're taking a cold shower. How did that go? So, <laughs> Um, he's still very skeptical, skeptical about the whole thing. <laughs> I, can I just only felt imagine. like you know, throughout the day, you know, there is the energy piece about it, but it's like, okay, if I could go, you know, do a cold shower, which I hate to be cold. That is the most uncomfortable thing for me to ever be is cold. I'd rather be burning hot than freezing cold. So I just, you know, throughout the day, the day I was like, okay, if I could do that, I can accomplish these things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what it is. You know, it's it's free cryotherapy. Some people pay for cryotherapy. You get a free run of your tap, especially if you live up here in uh, the cold white north here in Canada, land of hockey pucks, beaver pelts and maple syrup, uh, you know, where we just crawl out of our igloo and turn on our cold faucet and it comes out in chunks <laughs> how cold it is here. Um, you know, we get real free cryotherapy here. So it's a legit thing. But, you know, for real, though, it's uh, incredible for your uh, immune system, your lymphatic system, your cardiovascular system. It's incredible for your energy level. You know, screw the espresso or the coffee. You get 10x the energy at zero cost, and it only takes three minutes. And what the reason I do it, I always like to say, is because I want to condition myself to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes, it gives me tons of energy. Yes, I feel like I'm on top of the world when I come out of that cold shower. I feel the sense of pride that I've done it, operation shrinkage. Sometimes I have a second belly button that presents a problem because it's, you know, the shrinkage is a real thing, right? But I do it because of the energy, but I also do it to condition myself because if I can get myself to do that, I can get myself to do almost anything, right? Because it's like, it's uncomfortable. So it's conditioning that champion level mindset. So you're welcome. I'm glad we could give you uh, the sweet pleasure of the cold showers. You're welcome. We're here for you. I would say showers. It was one shower. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's the cool thing. It's always there for you when you're ready for it. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's in your back pocket now. Now you have that as uh, a tool in your toolkit to reinvigorate and to get yourself vibrating on a frequency of awesome anytime you want. So again, that's the buffet and the buffet, buffet menu. It's one of the reasons why I always like to treat this like a buffet with you guys. As a coach, it doesn't mean it's a have to, it's a get to, and you get to pick and choose what you put on your proverbial plate from the buffet, take what you like, leave the rest. Um, so that's the great thing about having a coaching program that you know serves, serves you to your breakthrough with a buffet menu is you get to serve it to yourself when you're ready for it. But I know many of our clients have become absolutely addicted to it because it's just so life-giving and so invigorating and uh, so empowering. So for those of you listening and watching, yes, we really do cold showers. That's how we roll. We're crazy like that. Let's talk about perhaps another one or two skeptical tries that you uh, felt as you launched into this. Things that seem kind of counterintuitive or kind of out of the ordinary or, you know, flew in the face of everything you'd been taught in the past. Was there anything else you noticed that was very countercultural or counterintuitive beyond the cold showers? I'm curious. Well, the, uh, the switch in technology was a, you know, perfect timing for me because, you know, as we went into COVID, you know, you, you helped introduce how to use um, social media and how to use kind of more of the technology with doing this with a zoom. I got very comfortable on zoom. I you know working through this program and now I use it all day, every day. If I'm not on a teams or zoom call, I don't know what to do with myself, but I've gotten very, very comfortable with communicating um, through the computer. And that has been very beneficial um, to connecting with all of my clients more efficiently and more comfortably. Awesome. So 
Uh, technology, a big piece. A lot of us were people, people, we love people mm -hmm. or, you know, the quintessential salespeople that, you know, have the gift of gab and we love connecting with people and serving people. We're not necessarily propeller heads who are adept at technology. Uh, if you are, you're more of the exception than the rule. We count that as a blessing and an advantage that you want to use in your favor. Uh, cer certainly a circle of competence most people in this business do not have. So technology is a big part of what we do and getting you, getting our clients leveled up with technology. So you're working smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of that is culminated into uh, an avalanche of awesome for you over a very short period of time. You've over doubled your business in just three months. Some people, and of course, a big chunk of that being in the purchase business, while most people are just picking that low hanging fruit in the refi business, and you're still going to the gym. I mean, nowadays, top producers, no one's going to the gym. Everyone's just waking up and grabbing a cup of coffee, diving into their emails and working for 12, 14, 15 hours straight. And they got no life. They're pulling their hair out. They got the COVID cushion building and they're totally on burnout mode. And they keep telling themselves, I can't afford to go to the gym. I don't have the time. I don't have time for anything else. I don't have time for self-care. And here you are going to the gym consistently, uh, getting in great shape and, uh, and kicking ass and taking names and chewing bubble gum at the same time. So tell us about how that has come to be, because I want to address, I think, a natural listening that people are going to have, especially veterans. And that is, of course, she doubled her business. It's a freaking refi boom. Of course, she's doing great. It's a refi boom. These are crazy low, historically low rates. Of course, she's doing well. It has nothing to do with the program door. It has everything to do with the fact that rates are so crazy low. Maybe why don't we just speak to that to begin with, and then we'll talk about, you know, how would your life be in this COVID environment had you not invested in this program? Had you just kept doing what you've been doing and getting what you've been getting? So, yes, very true. We were in the middle of a big refi boom. And I would still say that it's not even close to half of my business. So I have, the refis are nice. It's a nice gravy. It's, you know, something to not ignore but i literally just focus on the purchase piece of it every single day like every day my goal was to get you know three new purchase applications a week the more pre-approvals i can get across the door the better so i just really focused on that and i put my time in every day to work on that piece of it and then the refinances came on the side. So it's obviously been fruit by virtue of focus. You know, right. you, what you focus on expands where your energy goes, your results show, and you've been pouring your energy in that area by virtue of your focus. So that's awesome. What do you feel has been the difference that's made the difference for you to not only increase your production and your volume and your income by over double in such a sh short period of time, you did 22 loans in August. You, you, you were averaging 8.7, I believe, loans a month when we talked in June. And then in August, you did 22 loans. You've been tracking 15 plus loans ever since. And now we're working on that seven figure trajectory. Now that you're in the seven figure lender academy, we're building that momentum towards that next level of growth and seven <laughs> figures. But obviously a pretty significant increase in a very short period of time. What has made the difference for you. You talk about focus, you talk about, you know, the importance of focusing on your purchase business, but what's been the difference that's made the difference for you beyond just the focus that's culminated in such a avalanche of awesome for you? So I think what you have really, your program has really helped me do is look at what I already have. So instead of looking outside, always looking for the next deal, always looking for the next connection, it's really connecting with the connections I already have with the leads that I have already generated, you know, with my own book of business and with my own referral sources and just really staying close with, with those leads and nurturing them and working with them until they were ready to buy. Yeah. And it's, you know, it sounds so simple, but it's so profound, you know, because we see people all the time, they're spending tens of thousands of dollars on Zillow leads while mm -hmm. they neglect their database. They're leaving a shit ton of money on the table on their database. Yeah. Just, by virtue of neglect. So it's a bit like stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. 
unwittingly yeah. they're stepping over dollars to pick up dimes because they're not even tapping the most rich treasure trove of opportunity right underneath their nose in their own database. Realtors they already work with, prospects and clients that are already in their database, repeat and referral business they're not getting by virtue of not having the systems in place to mine that gold. So it's an egregious loss in opportunity, loss momentum, and ultimately lost dreams and goals because people just aren't tapping that to its fullness. They're not even scratching the surface of the surface of what's possible. Uh, and so, you know, it sounds so simple the way you say it, but it is indeed so profound when you start to exercise it in your business. Tell us about the results that for you felt most surprising. Obviously you got in this business uh, or rather in this program in it to win it, not to just get mediocre last lackluster results, but to create a landslide of, of breakthrough results. That's why you got in this program. So it's not like you didn't expect to create a breakthrough. That's why mm -hmm. that was the intention. That was the commitment, but tell us about some of the, as I like to call it, surprising results you got might've been hidden results you didn't expect, or might've been, wow, this is actually a lot easier or more fruitful or more effective than I anticipated. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I just, I guess I wasn't expecting to have a different mindset towards this business. You know, I've been doing this for 18 years. So to make some small, really, really, really small shifts makes such a huge impact on my enjoyment and the joy that I feel, you know, and um, just changing some of that, how that has just made it so much better for me as a person in this business. Just to illuminate that a little further, what are the top maybe one, two or three small shifts that you made that acted kind of like the small hinges that open big doors to big breakthroughs, specifically in your journey? over the last uh, three to four months. What what were those little little shifts? Maybe highlight one or two of them that really made a difference for you. So what has really helped me is to, you know, realize that it's better to have a conversation with a borrower, a good in-depth conversation with a borrower when they are 100% committed and in a place where they can listen to you and pay attention. So mm -hmm. scheduling consultations has been really big for me. So, you know, mm -hmm. I think you get a lead, you call them, you throw up all over them. Okay, here's the rate, here's the payment. This is what we can do. And, you know, they might have been in the grocery store, you know, yeah. buying groceries and they did not hear a single thing you said, nor do they remember who you are. So it's just making an, an initial um, touch and then scheduling a time with them through the use of technology for a time that works for them so that you have a 30 minutes where you both have each other's undivided attention to really have a good, solid conversation. Yeah, it's, that's huge. And again, one of those overlooked things you think like, really, you really think that having someone fill out a form and booking an appointment and having a calendar invite sent and having reminders to show up and having dedicated, sacred, allocated time set aside for this discovery call or consultation, you really think that's going to make a difference? And the answer is, heck yeah, it makes a difference because otherwise you just fly by the seat of your pants, winging it. And so are they, and they're not fully present. They're being distracted. Sometimes they don't even show up to the conversation because they forgot because there was no calendar invite. There was no structured system to remind them to show up. Have you noticed that your show up rates on your appointments have gone up as well using technology like that? Yes, absolutely. And then when I have those appointments, I make sure I have something of value for them to take away. You know, so I always make sure I have a presentation that puts things together for them so they can see it visually. They can see me visually. You know, they might, I might not see them. You know, a lot of people are not comfortable with the camera. At least they see me. They see my body action. They can see the sincerity in my face while I'm talking to them. At least hopefully that's what they're seeing. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, who they are. But then having something they, they can take away and they can value. And then they can take and show the realtor, look what Erica put together for me. You know, look what she did. Look at the time she took to make sure that she could explain it in a way that I would understand. Yeah. So I love that. You're bringing the intimacy of a face-to-face -face meeting and you're using technology to do that. It's one notch lower in what I would call marketing intimacy. 
from a face-to-face -face is a Zoom meeting. They don't have to have a camera. You have a camera. They can see your smile. They can feel your heart just by virtue of seeing on the webcam that you're a real person. You really care. You're smiling. You're authentic. You're real. You're genuine. You're there to serve. I often like to say that sales isn't something you do to someone. It's something you do for someone. So you're coming with that heart to serve. They can feel that. And then, of course, the rave reviews that come back to the initial referral source, in this case, the realtor. So that it becomes that, you know, upward spiral of awesome where the realtor is even more reinforced to send you even more business. And it just keeps building momentum, pouring gasoline on the fire with that positive sentiment. Is that what you mm -hmm. found to be true by, by virtue of having that, uh, that systematic approach to giving wow factor in the initial stages? Yes. Very, very cool. So we're just scratching the surface of the surface guys of some of the things that Eric has uh, applied by virtue of being part of the program, but that is a great case in point of some of the things that uh, can really push the needle on profit and performance. It's not necessarily the big grandiose things. It's just the little things, the little things that make a big difference. So tell us about where you are now. You were averaging about 8.7 closings a month year to date from January to June when we talked this year. And uh, you did 22 loans in August. Tell us about kind of where you are now in terms of the growth trajectory and, and what are you most excited about in your life and your business right now? So I'm now averaging, you know, about 20 loans a month and that there are some growing pains with that. So, you know, we're, we're learning and we're shifting and we're making some, you know, tweaks because I want to make sure that this is something I can maintain and do more of. So I just, you know, I, I would say I'm taking a lot of time to make sure my routines are in place, that it just is something that you continue to do on, I can do on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, when you go from eight loans a month to 20, plus loans a month, you got to be knowing there's some stretch going on there. There's some yeah. muscle building going on there, not just in terms of your systems, but also team building, uh, training, empowering your team, bringing on top talent, keeping top talent, training top talent, undergirding your top talent with the right systems, policy, procedure, protocol. There's a lot in there. There's a lot of growth in there and a lot of muscle building in that. Uh, so what do you what are you most excited about as you're still pressing into that growth and uh, you're still putting those champion level routines in and refining them so you can keep growing up the mountain to champion level results higher and higher. What are you most excited about right now in the season of your life? Uh, you know, I'm hitting the midsection of my life here. So to know that the sky is still the limit, you know, and I think as people get older, they, they think about slowing down and that is definitely not my, my mentality, but I'm most looking forward to showing everybody that you can be a large producer. You could be hugely successful and you can still be a good mom. You can still be a good spouse. Um, you could still have a good balanced life. And I really thrive to make that happen 80% of the time. <laughs> I love it. And I just, I want to honor you as uh, we start to wrap up here, Erica. I want to honor you for how you showed up in the program. You're showing up to the Q&A calls every single week in it to win it, emptying your cup so we can fill it with your dream. Super coachable, super committed, super resourceful, super decisive. I mean, you showed up like a champ, and that's a big reason why you've been successful and a big reason why you will continue to be successful is you know your humility, your coachability, and your work ethic. And uh, you're just drive not to perfection, but progress. I mean, you're just always stepping into the best version of yourself. It was an absolute delight and pleasure and privilege to serve you over that journey. And now, now that you're in the Seven Figure Lender Academy, I have the great delight and privilege to support you even more in that trajectory of awesome. So I feel super blessed and grateful to be part of that journey with you. Um, but you know, just uh, a huge kudos to you. Uh, your hubby and your kids are blessed to have you as a uh, leader, mom, wife, and um, just your energy and your love of growth is contagious. And I know if your kids even get half as much of that as you do, they're gonna be 
blessed beyond measure in their own lives as they take that and run with it on their own journey. So just awesome, awesome work. And I just feel so grateful uh, to be able to share your story with the world. So thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you so much, Doran. So as you guys are listening to this, if you hear a part of your story intertwining and connecting with Erica's story, and if you're starting to feel like, hey, maybe there's something actually of real substance, of real validity, of real heart, and of real impact in what this crazy guy, Doran Aldana from MortgageMarketingCoach.com has to offer, maybe there's actually something real here that could be a benefit to me. I want to create a breakthrough in my business. I want, and I'm ready to, and I'm sick and tired of doing it the hard way. I'm sick and tired of being in stagnation. I'm sick and tired of having no life, working crazy hours, being totally out of whack with work-life balance and being on the verge of burnout. If you're at a place where you know you're capable of more, you know you're called to more, and you know there's, there's whole, uh, so much more available to you if you can just make a few tweaks in how you are showing up in your life and your business and how you're structuring your business so that your business serves you, not the other way around, so that your business liberates you as opposed to enslaves you. If you're ready to explore what we can do for you, I invite you to do what Erica did just a few short months ago, and that's to book a call. It's a honest, real, authentic conversation where we just have a chat on the phone together and we look at where you're at, where you wanna be and how we can help you get there. If we can get you there, we'll show you how to do that just like we did with Erica. If we can't, I'll be the first to advise you to pass, recommend something else or something else or someone else. But one thing I 100% guarantee is you'll leave the call with more clarity, right Erica? More clarity <laughs> than you ever have before. It's gonna be lucid explosion of clarity like you've never had before just by virtue of having the conversation. So if you're up for that, and if you're up to that, I invite you to book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Just book a call, get on the calendar. Let's have a chat and let's see what we can do for you. It's the first step that Erica took that was the beginning of the journey of an avalanche of awesome in her life, in her career. And she's just scratching the surface of the surface in just four months. She hasn't seen nothing yet. We're just getting war warmed up on her expanding into being the best version of herself in her business as well as personally. And so we invite you to take the same journey if you're ready to create a breakthrough in your business. And if you're ready to do transformation in your life, not just a small little uptick in performance, not just a little itty bitty increase in income, but to create a quantum leap breakthrough in your life, in your business, in your income. If you're ready for that and you're committed to that, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. Uh, last words from you, Erica, for someone who's on the fence right now and is considering booking a call, but maybe they're thinking, oh, I'm too busy right now. I got too many loans in the pipe. Maybe I'll do this later. Uh, I, I don't have time in my schedule to think about coaching right now. I have a hard enough time just staying above water with all the loans in the pipeline. Uh, but they're also feeling stressed out, burnt out, overwhelmed, and frustrated with how their life is and how their business is, what might you say to someone like that who's on the fence right now and is kind of holding back? Uh, that there's the best time is the present. And if you keep postponing it and you keep procrastinating against it, you're just not going to do it and you're not doing mm -hmm. yourself any favors with that. So regret is something you should never want to live with. So it's time to... Uh, Keep moving upwards because you start making that slide back down, it's a lot harder to get back up. Amen, sister. And rarely does growth come with the comfort zone. Growth is always outside of the comfort zone. Discipline weighs an ounce, regret weighs a ton. So 100% agree with that. And uh, I just appreciate you. I honor who you are and I honor the fact that who you are today is leaps and bounds uh, a shining, gleaming, beaming version of who you were just four months ago and the growth you've had. And I can't wait to see the growth that you step into over the coming months and years ahead. So thank you again, Erica. I so appreciate you. And uh, thanks for being awesome. Thank you, Doran. 
All right, you guys, we've been with the one and only Erica Dose, and this is Dorn Aldana from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And again, if you're ready to step up and create a breakthrough in your business, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with us. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Okay.